I know, I know, I know, I know. How the hell did I read A Court of Mist and Fury from Rye Sands POV? Well, to explain how I got this book and read it, and we'll be reviewing it in today's video, I first have to share with you how I got this book. So it's quite a bit of a story. So get comfortable because I have a lot to share with you. Okay, so where do I start? Around September time or so, I decided to do a reread of the entire Harry Potter series. And when I finished it, I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? That was so much more enjoyable than I remember it being the first time that I had read it when I was like much younger. And I had a couple of people message me. I'm like, they're like, if you want a little bit more of Harry Potter, why don't you get into fanfics? And I'm like, what the hell is a fanfic? And it's basically when people, like regular people, decide to post stories that have to do with the universe or, you know, something like that. And then they basically just post posted online to like, you know, archives of our own or some other website, and then people get to read it for free. So there's this very, very popular story that's called Manacled by Senlin Yu, which is a fanfic of Draco and Hermione. It's like a romance between the two of them in a different reality where Voldemort actually won the war at the end of Harry Potter and what basically happened after that. It is very dark, very twisted, a ton of trigger warnings. Like everything you could think about that like would be a possible trigger warning is most probably in this book. I have not read it yet, but it is going to be the next book that I'm going to read. And that is more or less what I've heard about it. So the second that somebody kind of like put this on my radar, I'm like, you know what? I really, really, really do want to read that. It sounds like something so good. And there's such like a deep dive that you can do into Draco and Hermione fanfic. And this is probably like one of the most popular ones. So it's a great place to start. So I'm like, you know what? I really do want to read it. The only issue with that is is that it's only available via ebook. And I have tried ebooks a handful of times and they're, they're just not very much like for me. I really don't enjoy stories as much when I read it via ebook. So I'm like, you know what? I really want to read it. I'm not down to read it via ebook though. So like, I'll just push it off, get to it one day. And then a couple of months passed and I started getting myself into a really horrible reading slump. I was kind of over all of the like romances that are just the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, I really need something new. And then the same person that originally told me about Manacled was like, look, you still never got around to it. Why don't you give it a shot? And I'm like, I really don't want to read ebook. Books. And then they're kind of like, why don't you get it hand binded for yourself? And then I started doing all this research into how to get an actual physical copy of the medical book because I'm like, you know what? I would love to read it. I just really want to read it by holding it in my hands. And then I found out that it's extremely difficult to actually get a hold of one because you can only get it via commission as in you don't actually pay somebody to make it for you. You just pay them for the materials that they're using to make it because there's a lot of like legality stuff and like illegal things that could surround it because I don't know, it's like a whole list of things. I did a bunch of research, it doesn't really matter. But the thing is, is that you can't actually just like easily find it and like easily buy it from someone. And there's like, you know, wait lists and wait lists of trying to get a hold of it. So I basically like, look, I don't really want to wait like, you know, three years to get my hands on a copy. So why don't I learn to make it myself? Because I have been looking to like, you know, get into a new hobby. I'm trying to like read a little bit less, find something else to fill my time. And I thought that, you know, making a book by hand by myself would be something really cool that I would really love to try to do. So that's exactly what I did. So for the past, I don't know, maybe like two months or so, I deep dived the internet for trying to find tutorials on how to make it, how to get like, you know, everything set up. There is so much to it. And that was what I have been up to for the past couple of months when I've basically been in a reading slump and reading a lot less. I was trying to figure out how to hand buy myself a freaking book. And while I was on this mission of finding like, how do I get it typesetted? How do I get it printed? How do I get all of the materials? What materials do I need? How am I going to actually make this? All of that sort of stuff. I came across another fanfic that was A Court of Mist and Fury from Rye Sand POV. I found that this is an actual thing and I'm like, this is my favorite book of all time. I have to make this one for myself as well. So when I was going on the mission of making this one, I decided to just tack this one on as well and make it too. And then it happens to be while I was making this one, I made myself a second copy in black because I wasn't sure which one I was going to like. And I really wanted to make like a handful of these because like obviously the first one isn't going to come out good. So I made a couple while I was on the mission making them. So I ended up with A Court of and Fury from Rye Sands POV in a black version. Then I made it in a blue version and then I also made myself manacled and then once I was finished doing all of that the first one I decided to pick up was my Accord Mist and Fury book and that is why in today's video I wanted to tell you all about it and how it ended up going for me I'm going to share with you my review for it basically but before I did get into that I wanted to show you how I actually hand binded all of these books because I did spend a lot of time on it and I am very 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 proud of it so I did end up um filming my the entire process of doing that so before I do get into my review for this book, I really wanted to spend a couple of minutes and showing you a, a semi whatever tutorial. It's not a full tutorial, but it's kind of like a step by step of what I did it to create this for myself. So that's what we're going to do now. And then I'll get into my review for this book. 
So to start this off, let's give some credit where credit is due. So first up, I have Accordimus and Fury from Rye Sands POV. So this was written by Illyrian Tremors, and I will have the link to the archives of our own website down below, like so that it will send you right to this in case you wanted to read it for yourself. I did create this dust jacket by myself. This is the cover, this is the spine, and then this is the back. It's like Valaris, the City of Starlight, hand binded by Aviva. I thought it was really nice. I'm very happy with how it came out, and I designed the black one as well. It's literally the same thing, just in black. So um, that is the gist of this one. And then for manacles, um, this has a bunch of artwork on it. So the front, the back is all artwork. And then inside there's actually a bunch of artwork as well. So this was all actually illustrated by someone named Avondale. I will have a link to her Instagram down below in case you wanted to check out her stuff. I did get all of this art off of Tumblr. She's very open with letting people use it for hand binding, for personal use and things like that. So it wasn't like, you know, a big deal to use it or anything. I just wanted to tell you where I got it from because it's really nice artwork and, you know, it definitely deserves a little bit of a shout out. And, but like I put all this together. So I kind of like, you know, laid the dust jacket out for myself, but I did use her artwork. And also the author for Manacled is Senlin Yu. I will have a link to the archives of our own website, just like down below in case you did want to like read this for yourself on their website, because it is all available for free. And it happens to be for both of these books on the inside, I did have to get it like typeset. So technically I could have done it for myself, but there are so many people online who have already put it together in like such a perfect way that I didn't need to waste my time doing it. So I actually used um, somebody's PDF file. Her name is Steffi's Bindy. I will have a link down below to her Instagram. And I will also have a link of where I downloaded it for myself in case you were interested in downloading it for yourself as well. Um, and I think that is the gist of, you know, all the technicalities uh, according to like for these books. And then happens to be, I personally don't have a printer. So I was trying to figure out how to get it printed for myself because, you know, the first step of making the book is getting the pages printed. And um, I actually, since I'm a graphic designer, I've said this multiple times on my channel. I actually have a client that I work for that I'm also family friends with and he happens to own a print shop. So he was kind enough to let me come into his shop one day and spend a couple of hours there and use all of his machines so that I can get this printed for myself. And it happens to be because I was lucky enough to do that in a professional print shop, I was actually able to um, cut out step one, which would be to actually fold all of the pages. So let's jump into you know the little uh, thing that I put together for you guys because you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So now you're looking at the um, actual like professional printer that I was using to print all of my signatures, where it's just like, you know, a piece of the book, whatever. Anyway, it basically came out folded and then I was putting them all together. So when I came home, all I had to do was like repress it down. But most people have to like fold it like by themselves and really start from step one. But anyway, after I did that, I put it into this little handmade um, press that my husband made for me and I just let it sit there overnight. And then the next morning I took it out and then I had to refold it all down so that everything Everything is like as tight as it could be. So that's basically just what I'm doing here. And then what did I do next? Let's wait for me to finish. I put it back into um, the thing and then I basically started to make some like lines for where I'm gonna end up cutting. So this is me basically cutting a bunch of lines down the spine because now I have to go and, you know, press holes in it so that I can actually like go and sew it. So by first sawing it and then going through and just like punching holes that didn't end up making it through, it makes the sewing process and all that much easier. So this is me basically sewing it all together. Now, this took a very long time. I probably sat here for like an hour or two really going through all of them. That was just like a little tiny clip of it. But anyway, after that, I started making um, my end pages for the book. So this is me just cutting it out and folding it so that it would be like the correct size and everything like that. And then I had to go and basically attach it to my book. So behind here, you can basically see my book is officially done. And now I'm just adding on the end pages to like the front and the back. And then I basically afterwards started to, um, you know, uh, glue down all those little extra strings that are there that's just like reinforcing my spine and stuff like that. And then once I was done, this is basically what it ended up looking like. I actually, I thought that this was so like pleasing to look at. I was so happy with how this came out. But anyway, after that, I put it back into the, um, you know, the, whatever this thing is called. And then I started gluing the spine and reinforcing it with this like little mesh material of sorts. And then this is what it looked like once it was all dried. And then once I was done with that, I actually went back to the print shop and used his machine to cut all of my edges again and then get my dust jackets, dust jackets printed. And that's like, you know, his, 
a warehouse and everything like that. And then I ended up coming home and I put on um, little headbands to the corners just to make it feel a little bit more professional. And then this is me basically cutting out the um, hard cover thing. Like I had to put all of it together. So that's like the spine. And then there's the two edges that I had to, um, you know, attach as well. And like a whole thing to like get it the exact right size so that everything bent. It was a very confusing thing to figure out. But once I did, that's basically what I ended up with. Like you could literally see it's like the open hard cover thing. And then this is me putting it into the book because I now had to um, go and um, cut it so that it was the exact right size that I needed it to be. So this is me just cutting it to the exact size once I had it all together. And this is basically what it looked like once it was all put together. So then all I really had to do after that was wrap the outside so that it wasn't just like a piece of cardboard. So this is me basically like gluing it and then putting it onto some book cloth. And then I was just like, you know, pressing it down, making sure that it was all nice, getting it all perfect and everything like that. So this is like literally like the last step that I had to do. So it was very satisfying to get here. And then this is like it flipped over so that I can just, um, you know, put like round the edges, whatever it is you want to call it so that it was all nice and pretty. So this is just gluing it down and then wrapping the whole thing so that eventually you won't actually see any of the cardboard whatsoever. And then I'm just attaching it now to my end pages. So this is me like, you know, taking the hardcover and literally like pressing it down so that everything is attached and it's a full on book. And then once I was done with that, I put it back into my book press, let it sit for a while so that it can dry and everything like that. And then I was just like fixing it up, cleaning it up a little bit and everything like that. And this is what it looked like at the end. This is like a literal full on book. This is me like, you know, flipping through it. It's a whole thing. It was absolutely amazing. I was so freaking proud of this. And then all I had to do after that was cut my dust jacket to size. I was waiting right until the end so that I had everything perfect and all of that sort of stuff. So this is me just cutting it and then wrapping the book and everything like that. This was so freaking satisfying. I was waiting like so long to get to this point and I finally did. And that's what it looked like at the end. So this is literally just like me showing you off the book a little bit. I was so proud with how it came out. This is the front, the back, whatever. And then this is the black and the blue version all together. And then uh, the whole time I was also making the manacled version. So this um, next clip is the manacled, like how it looks all together. It's such a thick book in comparison to according this and fury. And then this is just like, you know, the whole, I'm showing you the whole spine, the inside of it with all the artwork and everything like that. And then this is all of it together with Cooper in the middle of it. He wanted to say how he kept sitting under the table when I was working. But anyway, here you can kind of see the difference of how big manacled is in comparison to according this and fury. According this and fury is literally probably Probably like, I don't know, it was almost 500 pages long. And then Manacled is like, I don't know, probably 900 pages long. So I thought it was really cool to see like the differences in sizing. But anyway, that was it. That was like the entire like step-by-step -step process that I more or less had to take to make this entire hand binding book. It took me a very long time, multiple days, and I was making multiple copies. So it really was quite a mission, but I actually really did enjoy it. So I'm very happy that I did decide to like go and like figure out how to do this for myself because I think that it's just really cool to be able to not only say like, oh, I made myself an actual book but then when I sat down and actually started reading this it was so freaking cool to actually like sit and flip through the pages of a book that I actually made it was actually like slightly distracting because I kept just looking at the book and I'm like oh my god I made this why does this look like a real book every time I like flip through I was like oh my god this is so freaking cool but anyway um, I'm just really happy that I did it I hope that you enjoyed seeing the little like semi step-by-step -step tutorial not really of you know me making it and with that said I think that is like more or less the journey that I took to get this actually in my hands from beginning to end. So now that all of that is over, let's actually get into my review of what I thought about it because, oh my God, do I have a lot to say. So I actually did spend quite a lot of time writing up a full review so that all of my thoughts were like out on page and I didn't really miss anything. And also it made like a cohesive order because sometimes I get a little bit like fumbled with my words when I try to just like tell you guys things like right off the top of my head, especially when I'm trying to like be critical about this. So I wanted to go through the review that I wrote that I will also have on my Goodreads. I'll have a link for it down below in case you did want to like, you know, check this out later. But I did this for a recent video of mine and I, it ended up working out very well for me. So I wanted to do it again. So we're going to read through my review and then I'll add a little bit of commentary on top of it when I have something extra I want to share with you. So let's get started. This was the first fanfic that I ever read. So I went into it with very low expectations since I had no idea what to expect. And right away, I noticed a lot of grammatical errors that could have easily been fixed with a single reread. And to me, it didn't feel like Sarah J. Mass wrote it. Like I had seen a lot of people say it did, even though it was a solid attempt at copying her style. There was verbiage that she never has and never would have used in her writing. There were some thoughts and actions that didn't truly feel like Rysanne to me 
And overall, it wasn't flowing very smoothly and feeling like an actual book that could stand on its own. It was more like snippets, quotes, and moments from the original book, just from Rai Sands POV. And that that is just an observation. Like I was obviously well aware that this was a fanfic. It wasn't something that was really going through an editorial process. And I knew that it wasn't going to be perfect. I knew to expect grammatical errors. And I'm not necessarily like, you know, criticizing it. I'm just observing that this is what it ended up feeling like because I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. But with that said, we did get to see every important moment from where the original Accordimus and Fury starts. Like when she was sick at night in the sprint court and what he did and felt in those moments. Like he felt her through the bond when she was sick. Like we already knew that, but we really got to see him in the moment and how he acted and what he felt in those moments, which was really freaking cool. But even with being able to see everything from his POV, I was still itching for a tad more than what we were getting. I wanted some more inner monologues, some more of his thoughts and feelings, some more moments of what he was doing when he wasn't on page in the original book. Just overall more of a streamlined story that wasn't just snippets of all the scenes that we were already familiar with. But then, but then, literally listen to me because but then, oh my, at around part three when we headed to the summer court, it started giving off more of what I was hoping it would. It started to feel like more of a full story rather than just clipped moments and we really started getting a lot more substance which was making it really feel like Rise. I swear to God it was as if Sarah J Mass herself took over at this point and wrote the rest of the book herself. It started to truly feel like the actual Accordimus and Fury just from his POV and I'm not joking when I say that. There was just something that really changed for me the moment that we actually got to the moment of the like you know them all going to the summer court and all of a sudden he started to feel jealous and everything like that. Like I really I made up this story in my head that there was this girl that decided to write Accordimus and Fury for my Sans POV and I guess maybe it was getting trashed at the time or something like that and Sarah J Mass got a hold of it and somehow she got in contact with this person and she decided to like literally take over from there and start writing it for herself. That is not what happened to my knowledge but it totally felt that way like it was literally as if two different people were writing it that that is what I made up in my head. I'm like oh my god this is literally Sarah J Mass and what actually happened from my Sans POV and I was dying like all of a sudden I was getting all of the shakes and I was getting all sweaty and I'm like oh my god I'm literally reading Rai Sands POV where the beginning it was feeling that way I was like okay this is really cool this makes a lot of sense this is probably what Rise would have thought what Rise would have done but it didn't 100% feel that way especially because the writing just didn't feel as up to par but then the later we got all of a sudden I don't know there was something that changed about the texture and I was really dying for it like it, I think it was also just because we really started getting closer to like him basically combusting and being like you're my mate you're my mate so we really got to see like a lot of like how jealousy was the whole time we were in the summer court and we even got to see his nightmare of that time when Feyre went to him in the middle of the night to like wake him up from his nightmare. We literally like started to get into those moments and we literally got to see what was going on in his head. And I'm like, this is what, made this was his nightmare. There's no doubt about it. This is what he was like, you know, dreaming about at the time, even though we have obviously no idea what was happening, but it just all felt so real and it felt so unified and it was just so freaking good. Like we got to see, you know, the moment of when they got into a, the fight right before Starfall and he was ignoring her for a couple of days. I was like, oh my God, this is what he was going through at that time. And then we got to see Starfall. We literally got to see every single important moment in the book. But all of a sudden, for some reason, once we got to those later moments, it really started to feel so much different to me. And oh my God, I started dying for it. But anyway, let's continue with my review. So even though the beginning was a little rocky for me and I was not that impressed with it, once I got to part three slash the summer court moments, it all changed. And I was really a melted pile of blushful mush, happy and content to finally get to read my favorite book of all time written in my favorite character's POV. That is literally exactly how I felt. I should have just told you that right away instead of going on my little tangent. But anyway, let's continue. It was really cool to see all of his thoughts and feelings that led up to him saying the things that he did. It really felt like it filled in the blanks for some of those moments and it made me understand the conversations him and Feyre had more than I originally did since I got to see what was going on inside his head before, throughout, and after all of those moments. So with that said, I don't think that this story would make much sense per se and it definitely wouldn't read as smoothly as it did for me if you weren't very familiar with the original Accord of Miss and Fury. It's not the same exact book just told from his POV, but rather it's something that would be really cool to read alongside the original version while doing a reread to be able to get more context on where he's coming from and how he was feeling throughout the whole time, uh, like the whole timeline of Accord of Mist and Fury. So if you are an Akhtar slash Sarah J Mass fan, I definitely think that this fanfic is worth your time and worth the read the next time you're feeling like doing, uh, like the next time you're feeling like you need a little Accord of Mist and Fury rice sand sort of fix because I do think that it really like it gave me the Accordimus and Fury feelings even though I've read the book like a handful of times I really did feel like oh my god I was reading something new but also I was reading my favorite book of all time and everything was so similar nothing was changing
engaging because the author of this book, she literally took the quotes from the original book and just flipped it to be from Rai Sands POV. So it felt extremely, extremely familiar. It just was with like, you know, his internal monologues and stuff like that. And we even got to see a handful of stuff that happened behind the scenes, like him having conversations with Moore and Cassian and Asriel and like things that happened on the sidelines that in the original book, we only got little snippets of like, oh yeah, he was there that day or something like that. So it was very, very cool, but it wasn't necessarily like a carbon copy flipped on the POV of the original book. It wasn't like, this is Akamath from Feyre and this is Akamath from Isand. It was more of like, this is Akamath with Feyre's POV. And then this was all of the moments just with his things of it. And I do think that it's definitely worth the read, like I already said. And I think that it was absolutely amazing. And I'm so freaking happy that I decided to pick it up. So with that said, I do think that that is everything that I wanted to share with you for this video. I had an amazing time going through this journey for the past couple of months of figuring out what a fanfic is and then learning how to hand bind a book, hand binding it, like, you know, which took me freaking forever, but it was a lot of fun. And then also getting to read a literal book that I actually made by myself, by my hand. Like it was just all so freaking cool. So I hope that you enjoyed watching my little journey and hearing about what I've been up to for the past little bit. And I would love to hear if I've convinced you on like giving this book a shot, because I do a hundred percent think that it's worth the read, especially if like you're not, um, you know, weird about reading eBooks, then like literally go right now, click on the link and go read it because, oh my God, is it worth the read? And I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, once you do read it. So feel free to leave me a comment down below. If you know, you've maybe read any of these books, if you have any fanfics that you want to recommend me, because I am now like on a journey of starting to read fanfics. The next one I'm going to be reading is Manacled. And once I do finish it, I will be posting my review for it on this channel. So make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you're not currently subscribed so that you can get notified once this review comes out, because I'm sure that it's going to be one of my next videos because I literally plan to start this book next, except it is quite big. And I know that it's a little bit hard to get through at points. So I'm sure that I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to need a couple of days to read it. And then I'm going to have to film it for you guys. But basically this is going to be one of the next videos that is coming up. So you guys get a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's to come. And with that said, that's everything. So I am going to say goodbye. If you did enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel again, if you're not currently subscribed, but either way, just thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video because I did work very hard on not only like it in this moment, but also like planning it and everything like that. And I'm just really proud of how it all came out. So thank you so much again for being here. But either way, with that said, that's all. So until next time, enjoy reading.